Many international intellectuals were impressed with Prophet Muhammad's personal qualities and expressed it in their writings. Lamartine, the famous French historian, in his book The History of the Turks, said about Prophet Muhammad, If greatness of purpose, smallness of means, and outstanding results are the three criteria of human genius, who could dare to compare any great man in modern history with Muhammad? Mahatma Gandhi, the spiritual leader of the Indian independence movement and the pioneer of resistance through mass civil disobedience, said about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I became more than convinced that it was not the sword that won a place for Islam in those days in the scheme of life. It was the rigid simplicity, the utter self-effacement of the Prophet, the scrupulous regard for pledges, his intense devotion to his friends and followers, his intrepidity, his fearlessness, his absolute trust in God and in his own mission. Wolfgang Goethe, one of the key figures of German literature and one of the most famous European poets who was also a painter, humanist, scientist and philosopher said about Prophet Muhammad, He is a prophet and not a poet and therefore his Quran is to be seen as a divine law and not as a book of a human being made for education or entertainment. Michael Hart, the American author of the wide-selling book, The One Hundred, a ranking of the most influential persons in history, chose Prophet Muhammad to be at the top of the list. He said, My choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others. But he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular levels. It is this unparalleled combination of secular and religious influence which I feel entitles Muhammad to be considered the most influential single figure in human history. Muslims believe that human beings have free choice. Allah Almighty showed us the right path and the wrong path, and then left us to choose freely without any influence on our choices, and that one day life on earth will end, and on the day of resurrection, which is the beginning of the eternal life in the hereafter, all people will be resurrected, the good and the bad, the humble and the arrogant, the oppressed and the oppressors. Good doers among the believers will be hosted in paradise, whereas bad doers will be driven to hell. Everyone will be held accountable for what he did on earth. No one will be able to escape from the trial. And the Quran depicts the fear and the panic of people who will be worried about their accounts as follows. On that day, each man shall flee from his brother and his mother and his father and his wife and his children. Every man that day will have concern enough to make him heedless of others. God Almighty has provided human beings two important choices or roads. I want you to visualize with me now. The first road is a road of bliss. It's decorated, it's beautiful, it's comfortable, but in reality it is a road toward your destruction. It is the road of obeying your soul, lacking discipline, and staying away from the call of your Creator. The second road, although its incline is initially steep, and the decorations on the road are not many, is truly the road of bliss. It's the road of sacrifice, going against one's carnal desires, not listening to one's lower self, 
submitting oneself to the call of the Creator. The Qur'an attests to this by saying, Indeed, we have shown man the two ways. Either he will be thankful or he'll reject. On the Day of Judgment, we'll be judged according to our choice. Which road did we follow? Those who are haughty and arrogant, those who are slaves of their own souls, will find themselves in purgatory. Those who went against their carnal desires were awake in the deep, deep slumber of this life, obeying their Creator, staying away from evil and vice, submitting themselves, being just and merciful to others, they will find that the end of that road is bliss in paradise. Muslims believe that nothing happens without the knowledge of Allah and that by his knowledge he prescribed everything that's happening he knows what happened what is happening and what will happen in the future it is definitely a very important belief because a Muslim that practices belief in the divine destiny never gets depressed he may get angry or sad but never depressed because sometimes what seems good is not really good, and what seems bad is not really bad. Let me give you an example. Sometimes something good happens, and we're so excited and so happy, and after some time, we may discover that that's one of the worst things that ever happened to us in our life. And sometimes something bad happens, and we're so frustrated and so angry, and after some time, we may discover that that's one of the best things that ever happened to us in our life. So, if we don't really know what's really good and what's really bad, why are we still exaggerating in our feelings of happiness and our feelings of sadness? To believe in the divine destiny means that you exchange those two feelings of happiness and sadness with the feeling of acceptance. Anything that happens, I accept. If a good thing happened, I accept. If a bad thing happened, I accept. And it may happen that you hate a thing which is good for you. And it may happen that you love a thing which is bad for you. Allah knows and you know not.